Hey guys, my name's Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to be cleaning up some of these motor stators and some of this uh, electric motor shred residue. We're going to clean up the copper and increase the value. Here's a close-up of uh, some of the stuff we're going to be running, and these are the internal guts of electric motors. There's some transformers here. Uh, some of it's been through a shredder and liberated uh, from the motor and, and housing and stuff. Some other stuff looks like it's maybe been dismantled. I don't think this one's been through a shredder. Um, but, but there's a lot of copper in this. There's a huge amount of value in here, but it's contaminated with all these steel plates. Um, some have shafts on it and stuff. And so we're going to shred this up to a, a much finer uh, shred and break up all these steel plates from the copper wire through one of our bigger 34 by 24 hammer mills send it through uh, the hammer mill with a one inch slotted screen and then under a, a mag belt to pull out the steel and all of our our copper wire will come through clean and uh, we'll see what it looks like but we're hoping to get a number two product number two copper wire product out of this stuff and um, almost all this stuff we can run our limits on the machine that we set are anything under 20 pounds uh, that, you know, a stator like this. These are these actually break up pretty easy because they're just a bunch of plates glued together. Um, but anything under 20 pounds and anything with a shaft, you know, something like this, anything with a shaft or a solid metal piece in there uh, that's less than a half inch. So there's a few pieces in here we probably won't run today, like, uh, like this one here. That's got a pretty good sized shaft and that's just a huge, essentially solid chunk of metal. Um, here's another one with a, you know, a, a pretty hefty shaft. So like I said, anything under about half inch uh, and um, less than 10 pounds with the shaft or anything under 20 pounds with uh, like a stator or transformer and those will go through uh, just fine. And some of these bigger ones, you know, like this piece here is over 20 pounds. Um, but one of our customers actually bought a little shear and um, you can just shear this down two or three pieces to get it under 20 pounds and then run it. Here's some of the other material. This is uh, some of the smaller stuff. Again, this is all, most of it has been through a shredder and uh, there's still a lot of value here. So we'll get this cleaned up and then on another section of the video, we've got bins and bins of... Um, brand new, or not brand new, but, but cleaned up stators that haven't been through a shredder. I think these were probably dismantled by hand. Um, but we've got a tote of these as well. So we'll get these, uh, sorted and, um, and we'll run them and, and hopefully get quite a bit of copper out of these.
Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, guys, so here's the steel fraction from the pre-shred motors. So let's take a look at this stuff, and then we'll go take a look at the finished copper product. Here's all the motor plates and the transformer plates that went through the one-inch screen. And you can see it's it's pretty darn clean. All right, we got our pre-shred copper in this bin. It's about four feet tall, four feet wide, and uh, three feet across this way. And it's about half full, I would say. And so you guys can get an idea. There was a little bit of cast aluminum in there, like on uh, motor plates and stuff and, and end caps of motors. So there's a little bit of cast aluminum in there that if you're being a little bit more picky about it, you can make sure those get picked out. Here's another piece. But I don't know if that little bit of aluminum is a problem. And obviously there's some paper and some fluff and stuff in here but for a number two copper product I think this is pretty good what do you guys think would this pass in your local yard for number two copper we ran 3,000 pounds of this stuff in uh, an hour and 10 minutes so you're looking at 2,500 pounds or 3,000 pounds an hour most of it was under 10 pounds 10 pound pieces and so they went pretty fast Yeah, we ran it through a one inch screen. So again, this is the pre-shred motor stuff or the copper meatballs or whatever you want to call them. Now we'll go take a look at the motor stator copper. All right guys, well here's the results of our stators through the hammer mill. And these came really pretty clean. There's still some of that fluff in there, but our customer says that that's not a problem. It doesn't weigh enough to contaminate the copper so he's happy with it and we ran we were running about 2,500 pounds an hour through the one inch screen and these stators we measured them at about 25 to 28 percent copper and again I think this is a number two product uh, let me know what you guys think with this pass is number two at your local yard um, but most of these stators were 15 to, to uh, 18 pounds again we max out at 20 pounds and we ran about four hours here, uh, so we figured we ran about 10,000 pounds of stators, so we have probably about 2,500 pounds of uh, number two copper here. So it went pretty well. Here's our steel fraction. And we've got uh, somewhere around 8,000 pounds of steel here. But you can see it came really nice and clean. There's very, very little copper in there. I mean, even the plates, when they rolled up and stuff, they didn't, they didn't pinch any copper in there. And here's the machine. 
that's a hundred horsepower motor wired at 480 volts and it draws about 120 amps at max load and I was feeding that thing we have a little amp meter that I was watching and at idle when it's just turning the rotor it spins about 45 amps it, it pulls about 45 amps when it's running and then when you throw in a stator it'll jump up to 100 uh, or 110 and I was waiting until it got down to about 55 amps before I threw another motor in. Um, you might be able to push a little harder than that. I'm not sure. Like I say, I was kind of being ginger with it, um, trying it out, experimenting a little bit with it. But that's how we ended up getting our 22, 2,500 pounds an hour of stators and about 3,000 pounds an hour of pre-shred. Here's a look inside our 34 by 24 HD hammer mill. And we've taken the rotor out, uh, but you can see the, the screen here is a four inch, I think this is three and a half inch squares. And this is for like a pre-shredding situation where you're trying to uh, liberate um, some, some large metal pieces from non-ferrous uh, or just trying to shred large bulky items like printers and, and uh, fax machines and stuff like that. We've sold several of these machines just as a, as a shredder. So um, there's the four inch screen. We'll go take a look at the one inch slotted screen as well. So here's the one inch screen I mentioned earlier and it's a one inch uh, slot and it's about three and a half inches long. We have these big, huge, strong backs that we weld on the back of them. This screen obviously is upside down. When it is installed in the hammer mill, it flips over. But there's the, there's the screen. So here's the rotor. We're just getting ready to install it in the hammer mill. I got to put some bearings on and the, and the pulley. But I wanted to give you guys an idea of the hammers that we're using here. I think each one of these weighs about 22 pounds. Now we do four on one side and four opposite. You can see it there for balance. And so on this hammer mill, with uh, the stuff we're running today, we're only gonna be using eight big hammers. But at 22 pounds a piece, you're gonna have uh, almost 200 pounds of steel flinging around in the inside of this thing. And uh, so that's gonna bash up anything we throw down there.
So here are those two uh, alternators and starters that we put in. And really the only reason to pre-shred those is to take out this big steel, these big pieces of steel, uh, really hinder your ability to, to finally uh, shred this up and liberate the copper and the steel. And so by pre-shredding, you can liberate all this big steel, have someone on a picking conveyor picking it out, and then have all this stuff go through one of our smaller scrap lines with a much smaller screen, and all of this copper and these small steel plates and the cast aluminum can be liberated and then separated by a magnet, um, and you can get the ferrous and non-ferrous separated. So that's why uh, a good example of why you would pre-shred uh, motors, alternators, starters, anything with big pieces of steel to get that out and then you can further process this um, with another machine. Okay, so here's our dirty brass that went through the hammer mode. And if you run this under a mag belt and you get somebody picking, you can clean up a lot of clean brass from, uh, from all that stuff that wasn't worth very much. So here's our cast aluminum through our bigger hammer mill. And again, this is with a, a four inch square hole, uh, but you can see it broke up the cast aluminum off that motorcycle wheel here, um, the, the springs and stuff. There was stuff out of the chainsaw housing you can see here. Um, there's that little electric motor that came out of that sander that we liberated. Um, and so we, we broke up and liberated, there's that piece of steel off that, that uh, car part. Um, but we liberated a whole bunch of, of clean aluminum now that can be sorted, picked, um, and we've upgraded the value quite a bit. So here's those PC towers, and you got a, all this steel came really pretty clean, and then you've got all the pieces of boards and small wires and stuff. So that broke them up pretty good. And then surprisingly, all the casing material and steel around the power supplies, it really came out nice and clean. Get it out with the mag separator. And there's probably some hand picking here to be done, but it really separates all the different components really quite well. So here's our transformers. And we ran them through a four inch hole. In this situation is a pre-shredder. So now they can be run through a smaller hammer mill and across the mag belt. But the other option would be put a smaller screen in this hammer mill so you can run a large uh, single piece, but then have it liberate and, and separate all the copper and the steel from each other and then run it under a mag belt. Um, I think the biggest transformer we ran today was about 20, 22 pounds. Um, so we can actually you know, run a, a, a large piece of scrap metal all at one time through a one inch screen, liberate all the copper and the steel, and it's a one pass system. So I wanted to take a, a minute here and go over our new 34 by 24 inch hammer mill. And the measurement on that is a 34 inch swing of the hammers and then the case is 24 inches wide. And we've been hearing from a lot of guys over the years that they really needed a larger machine than our 24 by 16 inch hammer mill because they wanted to do larger meatballs, larger transformers, uh, computer towers, um, things that were either just bulky or that weighed up to 15 to 20 pounds. And so we designed this larger hammer mill for that. Right now, and for our demonstration today, we showed it as kind of a pre-shredder with a large screen, four inch holes, um, to just beat up the stuff, liberate uh, as what we could, but really the primary goal of a pre-shredder is to uh, liberate some of the larger steel pieces, such as the shafts, the larger pieces out of those transformers um, and uh, starters and alternators that you can then pick out before they run into a smaller machine, such as our smaller 24 by 16 inch scrap line. So this unit is powered by a, a 100 horse electric motor. Uh, and then across here, the feed side is about 12 feet high. And so for this demonstration, we fed it by hand but in a real production environment, you'd have a feed conveyor going up and feeding the hammer mill, and then uh, the material would come down through, and we have this, this chute here that will discharge also onto a conveyor belt that you could mount a, a magnetic separator over um, or carry the material off to some picking conveyors so guys could manually separate the material coming out of the hammer mill. So we've taken the cover off the hammer mill, and there's the screen, those are those four inch holes. And this is the rotor, 
and we have two rows of hammers. Here's one row and the other rows on the other side. But this row has three and then on the other side there's four hammers that are staggered. They're offset from these three. Um, and here's the here's the hammers we're using. They're manganese steel. And there's the discharge chute down there. So there's the inside. I believe this is a five and a half or six inch shaft. Big double spherical roller bearings here. And uh, the whole mill has armor around the outside of the case so that you can, you can replace it once it wears. And uh, when stuff goes in, it just gets beat up, comes out the bottom. So just real quick, I wanted to show you guys, here's an example of our 24 by 16 inch scrap line. Uh, this is our heavy duty 24 by 16 inch hammer mill. Discharges down onto a conveyor belt and then the material comes up the conveyor belt under a magnetic separator. And you can set the, the system with the larger hammer mill up in exactly the same way. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a visual example of what we have for our smaller systems and how you can set up the bigger the bigger hammer mill. And in future videos, we'll have the, the complete line set up so you guys can see the whole, uh, the whole process from start to finish.
Okay, so here's our crushed up clean aluminum. See, it all came out pretty good. They put it in their clean aluminum bin here. So they're pretty happy with the results. So we just finished our contaminated aluminum sample and I wanted to give you guys a couple numbers because everyone's interested on how much the value increase was. And so we ran almost exactly 2,000 pounds of contaminated aluminum and the value of that is 19 cents a pound which works out to be $380 a ton. Now we ran the sample, pulled the steel out and we ended up pulling out almost exactly 25% weight was in the steel. So we ended up, if you ran 2,000 pounds, you would end up with 1,500 pounds of clean cast aluminum. And today's prices on clean cast are about 37 cents a pound, which equates to $555 for that 1,500 pounds. So if you take the difference, we actually increased the value of the cast aluminum by $175 using the machine behind me. And the runtime for the whole 2,000 pounds was about 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, so here's the results from uh, threading up those computer towers. And I don't know, we probably did 20 to 30 or so. And uh, this is the stuff that went under the mag belt. The steel has, for the most part, been pulled out of it. There's some aluminum pieces off hard drives, aluminum heat sinks. Uh, but I, I think this is all the good stuff from out of the, out of the towers. And now it can be further shredded uh, granulated, maybe run through an air table, maybe run through a water table. Um, but we've taken all the manual disassembly out of the PC towers and we've just shredded them, got the steel out, and then this is the good stuff. So we'll, we'll pour the steel out and take a look at, at the steel fraction here. And, um, but I think this worked great. This is, this is where all the money is in, in PC towers, right here. So here's the steel fraction from those PC towers. And as you can see, you probably want a picker here to get some of the stuff that either got attached to the steel um, or something like, 
like this that probably has a little piece of steel on it that the mag belt pulled out. There's also another little little electric motor I found in there. Um, but it, there's hardly any boards in here. The 99% the of the weight is the steel fraction. Um, and then again, if you wanted to get the last little bit out, you could have a little uh, picking belt coming off the mag belt that you could have a guy pulling out some of this stuff that, you know, does have some value. This is one of those that's got those little copper uh, wound around the steel magnets. Um, the mag belt pulls those out. But as you can see, it came pretty pretty darn clean. So I think it's just fantastic. We did we did great. The machine works really good for shredding PC towers. So here's some stuff I hand picked just uh, while I was standing there, kind of watching, and I tried to pull out the big aluminum heat sink um, and get those out. There's actually a copper heat sink in there as well. Um, but this is, again, just stuff I, I hand-picked and it didn't take very long at all. So I don't even think you need a picker after the mag belt. Where you probably need a picker is um, for the steel fraction because there's some pieces like this with a board on them that still has a little bit of steel that you want, probably want to reprocess and get that board out. So a lot of our customers have been asking to see printers run through our hammer mill. Um, so we got a couple of printers and, uh, and a DVD player here. We're going to um, run these through the hammer mill, break them up. We'll run them under the mag belt. Any steel that comes out, we'll get. And then uh, we'll see if I can pick out some boards or anything of value out of these as they're going by on the conveyor. Something unexpected when you're running printers is that they crush so fast and come out so thick on the belt, the mag belt fins actually sweep off some of the plastic into the scrap steel bin. And so you'll see on this clip and the next clip that the material is so thick on the belt that um, we need to raise the mag belt a little bit so you're not sweeping plastic into the scrap steel. This is the non-magnetic fraction of the printers. And boy, for the most part, it's all plastic. There's some copper wire that carried over, some little paper and fluff, some aluminum pieces. We found an aluminum heat sink in, but the majority of this is plastic from the cases. Today we're going to run this whole bin of contaminated brass through one of our bigger hammer mills and under a mag belt. This is one of our 34 by 24 inch hammer mills and we're feeding by hand in this demonstration. Inside the hammer mill is a 4 inch square screen that crushes the material down to size, discharges onto this conveyor, and then moves the material up under the magnetic cross belt to pull out steel, and then can be handpicked the waste, aluminum, stainless, can be handpicked out, and the clean brass can go up to the end of the conveyor and into a bin. Here's the magnetic cross belt, and you can see that the steel jumps right up off the conveyor belt and is pulled off into the steel bin and I've been really surprised at the small size of steel that this thing can pull off so it's really very efficient at recovering the steel out of the stream brass. So I was the one picking the waste and stuff off the belt, and I was doing two things. I was picking off the aluminum, the stainless, anything that was not clean brass. 
as well as copper and anything of higher value I was throwing in a different bin. So not only was I getting the waste out of the stream, but I was also upgrading as well. So here's what we got out of that bin of contaminated brass we ran. And we got a barrel full of the, the clean brass, the stuff that went under the mag belt. And then we, we picked it um, and got all the, tried to get all the aluminum and the stainless out. We got a, a barrel of copper. The light's bad, but there's our clean copper. And then this is a barrel of miscellaneous stuff, aluminum, stainless steel, uh, plastic, hoses, uh, stuff like that. And then over here, this is the steel fraction that uh, the magnet pulled out. And we went through and we, we picked out some of the steel that had brass still attached to it and re-ran it and it all came pretty clean. So this is the this is the steel fraction from that bin of brass. And the whole bin uh, weighed about 1,750 pounds. And uh, so we'll take it back and get all our different fractions weighed up and kind of see what we got. Okay, so I just wanted to go over really quick the numbers from that brass we ran. We ended up running a total of 1,705 pounds. And if you're a scrap yard, the scrap yard can sell that for about 75 cents a pound right now, which is not a very good price. So the total value is going to be 1278 bucks. This is the stuff after we processed it. Uh, the clean brass and clean copper is where the value was. We had a little bit of contaminated brass, mostly some reversing valves and some other things that we couldn't quite get clean with that four inch screen. Um, so we just took them back as contaminated brass. Here's the breakdown by percentages. But what you'll see at the bottom here is after we processed that 1,705 pounds, we ended up with a value of about 2148 that uh, the scrapyard could sell once it was upgraded to clean brass and clean copper. So that was a value of about $870. It took us about two to three hours when you factor in the, the handling and the moving stuff around and getting cleaned up. So uh, it's a pretty good return, about $250 an hour for uh, processing a bin of dirty brass. And today we're gonna to be running this whole tub of brass radiator ends. And these things have a plastic top a brass piece here that they cut the fins off and a steel clip that holds them to the to the plastic and we're going to run them through our hammer mill behind us which has a four inch screen in it we're going to bust all that stuff up it's going to come out run under a mag belt behind me pull those pieces of steel off i'm going to pick the copper and pieces of brass off and then uh, the rest is going to go into this dumpster here which is all going to be plastic and waste These brass radiators were actually really nice because they came out in such large pieces that it was very easy to pick. And actually, it came out sometimes in such large pieces that they got caught on the mag belt here, the fins on the mag belt, and were swept into the steel bin. So at the end of the run, we just dumped out the steel bin and picked out any of the large pieces of brass that got swept off. But you can see in there now, there's a few pieces of brass and copper. We pulled all those out, so it was ended up being just clean steel at the end that was waste.
Now, I'm not an expert picker, but this is pretty easy picking. Uh, brass and copper was picked out, and any of the plastic just went off the end into the waste bin. And we ended up with three really, really nice clean products, waste, the clean brass, and the clean copper. Here's some of the stuff that the magnet pulled out, and you can see it's mostly these steel clips that, uh, that hold the brass onto the plastic. But uh, there are a few things, like this is some brass with, uh, with some steel inside, and uh, there's a lot of these little pieces like this where there's a little steel nut on there. And so there's some dirty brass in here. I'm gonna go through, pick through it, um, and see what it looks like for uh, upgrading some of this stuff and so here's the two bins or barrels full of clean brass that we got and we just hand picked all this out um, as it went out under the mag belt and uh, there are still some of these little rubber rubber gaskets on there um, but other than that it's all been under the mag belt it's all clean and uh, and it should be nice clean yellow brass here's the copper we ended up with from that run and just like with the brass radiator ends, it was all picked. Uh, there's still, like I say, a little bit of these gaskets on there, but this is all the copper, and I was really surprised. There's probably half a garbage can full of copper here. And then here's our dumpster full of the waste, and almost all of it's plastic. There were a few um, aluminum fins that I didn't even bother picking. I just, I just let them go. Um, aluminum's not worth very much right now, and uh, there were hardly any any of them left. There were a few aluminum radiator ends I also just let go. There's hardly any brass in there at all. It's all pretty much clean plastic. Okay, so here's the breakdown on those brass radiator ends we did. We started out with 1,440 pounds, and for the value of the scrapyard, they're worth about 25 cents a pound for a total value of $360. After we processed them, we ended up with 667 pounds of clean brass, 140 pounds of copper, a little bit of those contaminated brass ends and things that had the nuts on them. Um, and here's the percentage breakdowns. But this is, uh, was really a shock to me. We ended up with a value uh, to the scrapyard of about $1,450, which is almost an $1,100 difference in the value when we started with and the value after we broke it down through a hammer mill and picked all the good stuff out. So uh, you can see this was well worth doing. And again, it only took in that two to three hour range. So we were making pretty good money there for, uh, for processing this bin. So this is the hammer mill with the lid off. This is our 34 by 24 hammer mill. And I wanted to show you the guts of this thing before we shift it off here. These are the hammers. And we've run several tons of material through this. Copper, brass, aluminum, um, computer parts, electronics, all sorts of stuff. And the wear is, is very minimal. The, the hammers are still in great shape. You can see even the, the edges are still square and, and nice and sharp. This is uh, about a two inch by three and a half inch screen down here. And it goes all the way around the, the bottom half of the mill. These rotors here are three quarter inch thick steel. These are the pins that hold the hammers on. It's a six inch shaft here that the rotor assembly is attached to. And then the shaft is turned down to a three and a half inch and then onto the, these big spherical roller bearings. The pins that hold the hammers on right here are held in 
on the sides by these big plates. And to change the hammers, you take off these two bolts, take this plate off, and then you can pull the pin out, change the hammers, and put the pin back in. Depending on the application or how fine you're trying to grind the stuff, this hammer mill can take up to uh, 14 hammers. Right now we have uh, eight hammers, so four on each side, and they're staggered. So you can see the hammers here, and we're, we took out the hammers in between because we're doing a fairly coarse crush, and uh, we, didn't, we didn't need as many hammers. If you're gonna grind fairly fine, you want uh, more hammers, so you do the full uh, set of um, 14 in there. Over here is the, the drive side. It's run by a 100 horse electric motor. It's a six belt shiv here that gears it down. I think the rotor runs about 800 RPM run by six belts. And we can cut any size screen that you need. We've made two so far, a uh, four inch by four inch square hole, and then this, this screen that's in the mill now. And the mill, the way the screen attaches in the mill is the armor on the side here holds the screen in place with the radius of the armor, and then the screen is held in by the lid both on both sides. So when the lid gets bolted on, it holds the screen in place. And to change the screen, you just take off the side plates, the armor side plates, and you can grab it here with a chain and use a crane or a forklift, and the screen just rolls out from under the rotor, so you don't need to take the rotor assembly out to change the screen. Here's a shot looking underneath the hammer mill at the screen. So this is where the material will get crushed and come out the bottom. And this screen is inch and a quarter thick steel. And then we have big, huge ribs on the back, stiffening ribs, to keep the screen in shape and uh, for its, its lifetime in the mill. And then the screen is held on or supported on the edge of the mill by these big uh, crescent shaped steel pieces that bolt through and uh, give that little lip right here for the screen to sit on and there's one on on both sides here that holds the screen in place so here's the upper lid for the hammer mill and this has half inch thick walls it has stiffening ribs on the top and also on the back side here. And we'll take a look at the inside. All the, all the wear surfaces are covered by one inch thick armor, the heavy wear surfaces. Here, the back plate here, and then the side is half inch thick because it wears less on the side. There's these big carriage bolts that hold the armor in place. And uh, you can see from the wear that it's, it's minimal. This is an AR400 abrasion resistant steel and there's, there's not even hardly any chips at all or any dings on the armor at all. So it's holding up very, very well to the impacts inside the hammer mill. So here's a video of the four inch screen we ran uh, all our samples through. And this screen has had several, several tons of material, aluminum, brass, electronics, um, computers, all sorts of stuff run through it. And you can see the, the screen's still in great shape. It's got a few dings and, and dents here and there as to be expected, but um, this is actually one and a half inch thick steel. And you know, the, a little bit of wear on the corners of the screen isn't a big deal because the tolerance is so big. It's four inch by four inch. So even if it gets rounded out a little bit on the, on the surface of the hole, it's not a, it's not a big problem. 
Um, so you've got you know hundreds and hundreds of tons of life in these screens. And then here's the hammers. We pulled one out so you could see um, very, very little wear on this hammer. It's uh, drop forged uh, manganese steel for extra long life. They work hardened. Um, and so, you know, I think the, the wear parts, there were some concerns uh, on some of our earlier YouTube videos about the wear on the machine. Um, but you can see now after we've run some samples through the, through the mill and through the screens that the wear is pretty minimal. Um, and I think it's going to last a long, long time. So thanks for watching our video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave us uh, a comment below or you can find our contact info in the description below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.